Hi, my name is Sohail Ali. Welcome to A Day in My Life at IU. So I'm actually from Bloomington, uh, a townie as they call us. Shout out to all the fellow townies on campus. So yeah, basically IU is home, literally for me. My parents are about eight minutes away from campus. My mom is actually an advisor for informatics majors in the Luddy School of Informatics, uh, Computing and Engineering. My dad has a clothing and tailoring store in downtown Bloomington, Wade's Tailoring. Shout out to him. If you ever need clothing tailored or altered in Bloomington, hit him up. Growing up, being in Bloomington has been really great. I had a lot of older cousins attend IU, and actually three older cousins that were all RAs here at one point at IU. One of them was an RA at Teeter, one of them at Briscoe, and one of them at Reed. I remember seeing them move into their rooms, getting to visit them in their dorms, and being like, wow, I can't believe you guys are actually leading your floors. This is actually really cool. And I knew from that point on that I wanted to be an RA. Being a third year RA, I've gotten to meet a lot of different students throughout the years, a lot of which I still see throughout campus, and it's always really fun for me to catch up with one of my former residents. What's really cool about being part of the first cohort of engineering majors here at IU is that we were able to get really close with our faculty in ISE. Throughout the years, the curriculum has definitely changed, and a lot of that may have been due to the kind of feedback that we were able to give as the first class. So when we graduate in May of 2020, we'll be the first class of intelligent systems engineers from Indiana University. It's been one heck of a journey. Looking forward to continuing it here. I'm just as passionate about storytelling as I am about technology. Through my minor in the media school in media and creative advertising, I've been able to take some pretty cool classes like visual communication, where we make different photo, video, and a actually magazine project as well. This past summer, I was fortunate enough to be a production intern in New York at The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. That was a life-changing experience, being in Manhattan for the summer, running around, grabbing different things for the show all day, and it really opened my eyes to that industry and to see how it operated was really beneficial for me. I was actually able to bring some of my engineering knowledge of problem solving, critical thinking to that role. Shout out to all the fellow interns that I was with this summer. That was a really great experience getting to work at one of my favorite TV shows and getting to learn from a lot of the talented people like the producers and writers who make a show like The Daily Show possible every single day. Any student who's watching this, especially freshmen, if you're looking to get involved with something on campus, I highly recommend you check out Union Board. Follow us on social media. It's a great way to get involved starting freshman year. You can help plan some of the largest events that come to IU. Most recently, Union Board, IU Hillel, brought Anderson Cooper to give a lecture at the Musical Arts Center. I was able to lead the marketing campaign for that event. Getting to see the Musical Arts Center sold out, getting to take pictures of the event was really fulfilling. Really glad I was able to be a part of that. As our union board term comes to a close, I'm just really thankful for all the skills I've gained, the amazing people I've gotten to work with, and all the lessons I got to learn. Just left my engineering capstone class and I'm now headed to the Union to go to our exec meeting for Union Board. As I mentioned, I am the Vice President of Marketing for Union Board, which means I'm on the exec board. So we're gonna have our, uh, our weekly meeting now. So stay tuned for that. What is up everyone? I uh, just got done working out at the SRSC. I like coming here on the weekends, it's not as busy as during those peak times during the week. And it's just a great way to uh, kind of relax, you know, get back on the grind. So through my internship as a multimedia intern in the office of the provost, we follow around different students who are subjects of the 2020 documentary series. You may have seen the class of 2020 documentary series before. Right now I'm heading over to the IU football game to the tailgating field as one of our students is out there tailgating with their family. Got the camera gear here ready to go. So yeah, the, the weather looks pretty nice. Uh, hopefully it's gonna be a pretty good shoot. So now the only thing is to head over there to uh, get some parking. I'm gonna actually aim to go near Luddy Hall, the big parking lot there, and uh, see if I can now grab a spot. 
just wrapped up the shoot, just walked back from the tailgating field to the game. He's uh, about to get started here in a couple hours. Came back here to Luddy to check up on some 3D prints that I had left from earlier in the week, one of which is for a wearables course that I'm taking where we design and create a project based on a wearable piece of technology. And the other print is for my research that I do as an undergraduate here in the Luddy School of Informatics, Computing and Engineering. So let's head on into Luddy and see what we got going on. So here I am, I'm inside of Luddy Hall right now, home to the Luddy School of Informatics, Computing and Engineering. I am majoring in Intelligent Systems Engineering with a concentration in Cyber Physical Systems. So basically we study a lot of different things in the realm of robotics, embedded systems, electronic circuitry, artificial intelligence as well. Here I'm inside the Digital Fabrication Lab, which is also known as the best study spot on campus for us that are allowed to get in here with our access. This place has computers, 3D printers, laser cutters, soldering irons, any tool that we could use for any given project we can find in this lab. As the first class of graduates from the Intelligent Systems Engineering Department, we've gotten to see this program grow over the last four years. I'm personally very excited to be a part of the first class of undergraduates to get this degree. I will also be continuing on in the program next fall through the Intelligent Systems Engineering Accelerated Master's Program. I'm very excited to be a part of. Well, yeah, let's go check up on those 3D prints I was talking about earlier. Let's get the lights going in here. There we are. So here are the 3D printers. These are Ultimaker 2 uh, bots. This one, the extended one, a little bit taller. You can see that somebody here made a little uh, Luddy IU Trident doorstop, actually. You can see how it gets really thin towards the end. Prop it up under a door. Branding, always. Just got my 3D prints off of the printer. Just kind of wanted to share what they were and how these things came out. So these 3D printers print in a, it's a plastic, a PLA plastic at a certain uh, nozzle uh, length and diameter but basically this is for my undergraduate research that I was mentioning earlier so I'm just gonna uh, crack these open so I can show you what exactly these are supposed to be. This is my project for my undergraduate research with a professor by the name of Vikram Jadhau who focuses on uh, nanoscale engineering in his lab, the Nanobio Lab. So just so you can see there's always these support structures and outlines when it comes to 3D prints that you just kind of have to dig in and, and get around them eventually. Alrighty, so finally got all these little prints out of the little uh, security structure there. Basically, this is supposed to be a model of a self-assembling virus. Each of these individual pentagons here are going to be combined with some magnets. Oh my! Each of the holes here that you can see are going to contain magnets, respectively positive, negative. And so what happens is when this, when all these pieces are in like an enclosed container, like a clear sphere of sorts, and they're all shaken up together, the structure ends up forming itself randomly. And then you can see how a virus cell is produced, uh, its shape. And then after you shake it up a bit more, obviously you can break it up and then it'll go back to that loop of restructuring itself randomly just by shaking all these pieces up in the container because all the magnets hit each other and fall according to place. So that's a cool little project that I like to, I just like to share with uh, everyone. So it's like technology, meeting simulations, meeting biology, and work at the nanoscale level to, you know, fabricate it and make it at a scale that one can actually see. The lab that I'm uh, working with as an undergraduate is hoping to do some workshops over the summer with high school students so they could come in you know with their knowledge of physics and you know programming run simulations do 3d printing just like this and you know take away their own little devices and models so they can learn these basic principles of engineering from so that's the little research project there and then this guy 
is our first draft, first version of our 3D robotic hand that we're building for our wearables class. So for that project, shout out to my teammates, Eli, Gabby, Anthony. That class is a wearable sensor class. So basically we wanted to create a robotic hand that was going to mimic the actual movements of a human hand. So we have inertial movement, a unit sensor, an accelerometer, a gyroscope, all attached to an actual person's hand in a glove form. And as they move their fingers and wrist accordingly, we wanted to have a robotic hand mimic those motions as they were doing it. Just gonna rip this structure off here. This is, I've actually coined this version baby hand because it is just so small. The scale is definitely off, but it's just our first iteration to see if we can maybe not use our servo motors to go ahead and articulate this device based on feedback and movement. We're programming it in a language called Arduino. It's a C-based language uh, that has different boards that are super interactive, easy to pick up. Anybody who's interested in technology, engineering, and just making things, um, highly suggest go pick up an Arduino and just learn it. As I sit here in the fabrication lab, I realize how lucky I am to be in the new engineering program, paving the way, you know, creating IU history here at Indiana University of Bloomington. IU has been a big part of my life. I'm actually from Bloomington, born and raised. I went to Bloomington South High School. Go Panthers! Being able to be an IU student here and actually being able to have an impact through different organizations, from being an RA to being a union board director to my involvement here in the School of Informatics Computing Engineering um, has been really great. Well, that is that. That is my IU vlog. That is how I do IU. And I really hope that you enjoyed it and maybe you learned something out of it as well. I want to make a personal plug. Follow my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Sohail Ali, as well as my Instagram at shop by Sohail to stay updated with all my photography, videography projects there as well. I want to give a big shout out to everyone at IU Studios for allowing me to tell my IU story and having this platform tell it on so uh, thank you all so much big shout out to my buddy Matt Jacobs over there as well for connecting me